Hello and welcome to the fourth part of Leap's video series on scripting in Discovery. This episode will take a look at how to use and manipulate geometry with name selections, how to import and save that geometry from a script, and we'll also show you an advanced use case where name selections allow us to evaluate geometry to prepare it for use in, say, fluent or mechanical afterwards. Starting, we'll have a blank discovery window here and a new script file. What I'm going to do is make sure I'm in indexing mode, enable the record button, and then just as I normally would, I'm going to open a file, in this case, the geometry we've been working on in previous episodes. So I'm going to go to my drop down menu, open, navigate to my file, and select open. And what you'll see there is the code block equivalent of what we've just performed. Now, essentially, this will mean that our script can open our geometry at the start of each run. Similarly, we can also record ourselves saving our geometry under a new name. So if I were to go to the drop down menu, select save as, give this file a new name, let's say part 4 geo. and select save. You'll now see the equivalent command executed for that. In between these two code blocks is where we're going to be doing the rest of our scripting. And we're going to start by creating a name selection for the cylindrical extrusion on the top of our feature. We're going to do this in the graphic user interface. I'm going to select the two faces, go down to my selection and create a new selection. We can then rename this selection to cylinder. Now you'll note that the code record function will insert all snippets at the end of your code. So just keep in mind that when we're done recording our functions, we're going to want to move all of these changes up into the section between the opening and the saving of the project. Here though, we can see that the first code block creates a name selection. It takes in a face selection comprised of two faces, so body zero face six and body zero face five, and then it creates that new name selection with that selection. It then renames the name selection from group one to cylinder. Note that these indices will change if your geometry changes before the creation of the cylinder. So for example, if we had more or less faces on this base and were then to create a cylinder, it's likely that these faces would no longer be index five and six. A good way to figure out what index you're working with, if I briefly open a new script window, disable the record button, what I can do is select one face that I'm concerned with in the user interface, go back to my script and select the insert selection button. And that will show me that I've currently have selected a face selection of body zero face six. Returning to our main script, I'm going to re-enable the record button, and then we're going to move that name selection. So I can select it down from my name selections panel, select the move tool, and then we can move that along, let's say, the Y axis. Now, one thing you'll see here is that the new script block has this pink parameter called info1. What's happened here is our record function has reverted itself to use smart variables rather than indexing. Now this happens every now and again when you're swapping between script tabs. The way to fix this is simply to go into your project window, undo the changes you just did, remove the code block that's been recorded, disable the record, go from smart variables, back to indexing, re-enable the record, and then perform the move again. What you'll see when I perform the move a second time is that now we've recorded that block in indexing, which we prefer, over smart variables. We no longer have that extra info1 parameter here. Lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new, new name selection with every face that is not in an existing name selection. We can do this in a number of ways. What we're showing you here is just one possible method. Let's start by creating a list of faces in named selections. In this case, 
it's quite simple as we know the two faces that are already part of a name selection. So we will hard code this section. So let's go existing faces is equal to a list. And that list contains both of the faces that we'd previously selected. So get root part dot body zero face six and get root part dot body zero face five. Now what I find quite useful for operations like this is to perform this in a temporary new script window, just so I can give it a run and I can troubleshoot it as I go without worrying about all of these open save and existing code blocks. So let's copy this code line, open a new script and enter that. All of this will become defined as I run the script. So right now, existing variables, as you can see, is not a term that the interpreter is aware of. However, if I give this a run, if I give this a run and go back to the interpreter, you'll see that now existing faces is a valid variable. And if I print that, you can see that it's a list comprised of two design face objects. As with any list in Python, I can access the indexes of that with square brackets. So existing face one and existing face two. Now we want to compare this with all other faces. So let's create a for loop. So let's say for current face in, and then we want to loop through all of the faces. Now in this case, we only have one body, so we just need one for loop. So we can go get root part dot bodies zero dot faces. And then to check that this is accessing the right variable we want, let's go ahead and print the current face. Now, if I give this script a run, you'll see that we print a variety of design faces and that that number, if you were to check that with the geometry present here, is going to add up to the number of faces we have in total. Now, we want to compare whether or not the current face is in the existing face. In Python, it's nice and easy to do that. So we can say, if current face not in existing faces, we want to add this to a new list. So let's go back to the top of our code. Let's create a new list. This is empty to start with. And then we're going to go new faces dot append current face. Finally, let's print the new faces list. Now, if I give that script a run, you'll see that our design fa our new faces list is shorter than it was before. And we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces, which if we compare that with what we have here in the design window, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight faces. Now the number's correct. And as for how we can check that it's actually selecting the right faces, well, we can now add new faces to its own name selection. Easiest way to do this, if you ask me, is going to go back to our recorded script, find where we last created a name selection. We're gonna copy that code across. And instead of our primary selection being the two indexes from before, it's now going to be our new faces list. So now if I give this script a run, you'll see that our discovery window has created that new name selection, titled it other faces. And if I hover over that, or if I select it, you'll see that it's all the faces we intended to select. What we can do now is take this script, copy it and return back to our main script. We're gonna remove this list of existing faces as we don't need it anymore and replace it with the code we've just created in that temporary new window. Now we want to make sure that the order of our script is correct. So I'm gonna take everything from everything that we've recorded and everything that we've written, cut that and put it in between our open and save options. What you'll see now though, if I close this window, I can do that in the interpreter by finding the file.resetproject command. 
giving that a run, we now have a new blank discovery window with our script file. So if I give this script a run, we'll see discovery process for a moment, and then that's complete. So we've got our part four geo, the file is saved. We've got our manipulated cylinder extrusion. And if I go to our selection window, you can see we've got our cylinder and our other faces name selection. Now, the last thing we're going to show you is a more advanced case of name selections and how they can be used within scripting. So what we have here is a solid fluid interface where the solid has been cut away from the fluid. And we have one existing name selection, which is comprised of all of the solid faces in our design. What we want is to create a name selection for the corresponding coincident fluid faces. As geometry becomes more complex, scripting becomes a really powerful tool to optimize your workflows. So for example, in this case, our script is going to take in that existing name selection, and then it's going to perform a series of comparisons similar to what we were doing before. But this time it's going to be comparing a series of centroids and other geometric properties to discern which faces are coincident to the existing solid faces. If I give this script a run, and once complete, we'll see that we now have a new name selection called Coincident Fluid Faces. And if I were to hide the solid, we can see that all of those faces lie on the fluid and are indeed the corresponding coincident faces. That's all for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at an advanced case where we create custom user inputs that prompt the user for an input as a script runs. We look forward to seeing you there.